Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Miser Money G. Yes, continuing on with the 31 Days of Horror, it is time to review the reboot uh, based upon Clive Barker's to help the Hellbound Heart. It is Hellraiser 2022. Now, Hellraiser is a 2022 American supernatural horror film. It's directed by David Bruckner. It was written by Ben Collins and Luke Protrowski based upon The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. Now, the film stars Odessa Aziron, Jamie Clayton, Adam Fazier, Nussie Droot, Starkley, Brandon, and Brandon Flynn. Now, this is a new take on Clive Barker's 1987 horror classic where a young woman struggling with drug addiction comes into possession of the ancient puzzle box, unaware that its purpose is to summon the Cenobites. Ooh. You know, when Hellraiser first came back, came out in 1987 and introduced horror fans to the Cenobites, extra-dimensional sadomasochistic beings who believe that pain and pleasure are one and the same. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. No, there's nothing. There's a difference between pain and pleasure, but for these guys, they're both of the same. Uh, led by the being known as Pinhead, Hellraiser will become the latest horror franchise with 10 films in total. Now, while well, for me, the, while the first three, I guess you say four films were good, I, I did love Bloodlines, although a lot of people didn't like I had no problem. That's the one where Pinhead goes into space. Uh, the series began to falter, and eventually the film's going to direct to video after Bloodline. One of the problems is, is after Hellseeker, the rest of the films use unrelated spec scripts, you know, scripts that weren't have nothing to do with Hellraiser, but then they turned them into Hellraiser films. And then after that, after Hellworld, actor Doug Bradley stopped playing Pinhead. You know, for me, that's one of the problems because the series just took a dive for me after Bloodlines and then after Hellseeker, they started using scripts that wasn't anything to do with, Hell, with um, the Hellraiser itself. So those films were terrible. I know some people like some of them. I particularly didn't. I really haven't even seen some of the other ones. And then after Hellworld, because of the quick turnaround of the next film, Doug Bradley said, you know what? I, don't, I, I just don't have time. I got other projects. So he stopped playing Pinhead. So after the release of 2018's Hellraiser Judgment, horror fans have been waiting to see a decent Hellraiser film. And then, of course, where it came out that they were going to reboot the series uh, it has to do more. Than, it has mostly to do with the rights of the uh, of the Hellraiser franchises. I believe dimensional films actually had it once, and that's why they kept chunking them out. Because as with most uh, movie studios. Uh, once they have their rights to the IP, they'll try their best to try to maintain them by putting out stuff, and that's why you get movies like Judgment or even Fan Fan Four Stick. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, film director David Bruckner, along with writers Ben Collins and Luke Prochowski, uh, brings us their version of Clive Breaker's story. It's a reboot simply called Hellraiser, which I call Hellraiser 2022. So after seeing a man named Joey get sacrificed by a billionaire Roman White, we're introduced to Raleigh McKendry, a recovering drug addict living with her brother Matt, his boyfriend Colin, and their roommate Nora. Now, poor Riley, she's talked into breaking into an abandoned storage warehouse by her boyfriend, Trevor, where they find a locked safe. They eventually open the safe and find the Lamont puzzle box, where uh, Joey, the one that Joey solved earlier, where Riley begins her nightmare with the Cenobites and trying to survive with her wits intact. You know, it's kind of nice how they set it up, you know... We get to see Riley. She's recovering a drug addict. Uh, she's having a very um, back and forth with her brother. Uh, obviously, she's uh, still trying to struggle with her drug addiction. So I like that aspect of how they begin as we get to see uh, Riley's character as you try to uh, make some sympathy for her. Well, I guess you could say that after all the bad films that we have in this series, it's nice to see someone trying to do something different with Clive Barker's story. Story. Well, well, looking at this film, I think what David and the filmmakers are trying to do, they're trying to do kind of an art house approach. And I, and I like that because they're trying to do something different, trying to do something different with Client Barker Story. But for me, it's kind of a more of a, uh, it was more of a, okay, that's nice, but I'm not feeling it here. I mean, don't get me wrong. We still get the usual frayed bodies, body horror, blood, gore, most of the stuff that we've seen before in the series, and we get that here. So at least they still continue on with the normal things that we get in the Hellraiser film. I'm pretty sure lots of horror fans or Hellraiser fans 
will like the fact that we still get the type of usual stuff that we get in the Hellraiser series. I mean, I also like the look of the several Cenobites here, like the Weeper, the Ace Sphinx, and the Grasp. Some nice real set designs. Some of them look real slick. Some of them look like the typical uh, Cenobites that we've seen before, but looks more sick, slick, sickly done. Uh, I like the fact that everyone can talk other than uh, the priest character, which I'll mention her in a minute. Everyone can talk, so it's not just simply just like Pinhead. Although we did have the female talk in the first Cenobite, but other than that, we really don't get anyone that can talk other than Pinhead. So it's nice to see other Cenobites actually talking here. And we do get one of our favorite Cenobites, the Chatterer, is back again, doing what he does best, chattering. <laughs> I know everyone will be glad to see him returning. And I'm sure everyone will be talking about Jamie Clayton's performance as Pinhead, but she's credited as the priest in this film. I don't know why. I guess because it didn't want to upset everyone. I'm pretty sure a lot of people were upset the fact that they had a female playing Pinhead, not Doug Bradley, although Doug Bradley did give uh, Jay Clinton praise for her performance here. But as I stated before, and I'll say to begin, in Klein Barker's uh, novella, the, T the Hellbound Heart, uh, the Pinhead character is a dramatist. There's no mentioning that he was a male. So I don't, I don't mind the fact that they use a female here. Now, she puts her own spin on the character, speaking more direct and flattering instead of the dominating, intimidating pinhead that we've seen before. I like how she talks. She's more uh, direct. Uh, she speaks more in a more confident way of how she gets her character, how she's going her character across. Uh, and she's more flattering. She's more direct. Now, just because she's not as intimidating or dominating as Pinhead is, that doesn't mean she isn't as dangerous, frightening, or violent as she makes sure that you experience the plane and pressure, and she has such sights to show you. <laughs> yes, she does use that line in the film. My main problem with this film are the characters, as they're uninteresting, and they lack any type of development for the audience to care what happens to them. Now, Odessa Zeron, I think that's how you pronounce her name, uh, she tries her best to make Riley the trouble woman who finds herself in a very particular nightmare, but she is hampered by Ben and Luke's script. It means it doesn't give, doesn't give her the type of depth that is needed for a role like this, and her performance comes off a bit bland and flat. I mean, the same goes for the rest of the characters as well, as there is no character development, nothing that would make the audience care what happens to them. I mean, there is no depth to any of the characters here. I mean, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to make us feel sympathy for Riley, as I stated before. Uh, but there's no real correlation between her and Matt's relationship. Uh, as there's no real relationship between Trevor and herself. I'm assuming that Trevor is a boyfriend she met while she was going to uh, AA Anonymous, or I guess NA Anonymous. I guess he's supposed to be a recovering addict too. And of course, everyone knows that when you're recovering, the last thing you need to do is get into any type of relationship because that you're trying to get yourself better. And the last thing you need to do is get into any type of relationship. But there's no real focus on that. I mean, there's real no connection in between any of the characters here. And the same goes for Roland Voigt, played by veteran actor Goran Viznik, uh, as he simply plays another rich millionaire looking for something more than money. I mean, he's just another bland character that we haven't seen before. I mean, it's like, where is his real motivation? Why is he after uh, Leviathan? What, what purpose is he as other than just I'm searching for something more? But we've seen it all before. There's no depth to any of these characters here, and that's the main problem with the film. So despite the slick art house approach, uh, for me, we just have another lackluster entry in the franchise, but at least it's better than the last four movies in the series. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to give Hellraiser 2022 only two out of my five bloody gold coins. It's just, a, it's okay. It's nothing fantastic about this film. Yeah, the Cenobites look great. I love Jamie Clayton's performance as the priest. She's not credited as Pennant here. I like what she does uh, with her character here. It's just that the main characters in the film are just bland. They're flat. They're uninteresting. There's no real character development, no real true motivation, nothing that connects them, which is something that we truly liked about in the original um, Hellraiser films. We love Ashley's character. We love Frank. You know, those were strong characters, and we simply just don't have that here. 
So that's my video and review of the day, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, give it a uh, <laughs> please, <laughs> please uh, like and share this video because it does help out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, what do you thought about Hellraiser? Uh, please leave your comments in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about the film. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way, you'll be notified anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Monty G. And always remember that horror rules. <laughs> and I see it in my next video. I'm out.